Today, we'll make a beautiful text outline effect using Affinity Photo. If you want to follow along with me, you can download this image in the video description. To start, let's add the text. I'll grab the Artistic Text Tool. Then I'll click and drag to specify a size for our text. Then I can type our word. When choosing a font for this effect, you actually have a lot of options you can choose from. I do suggest trying to find a thicker font, or one that you can bold, so that inside of the outline effect, you can see through to the image behind it. I'm going to choose Alio for this font. You can get this same font for free on Google Fonts. I'll leave a link to it in the video description. Just come to this page, then press Download Family. After downloading the font, all you need to do is unzip the file, then open up the folder. Inside this particular font, you actually have a lot of options, from bold to italic. If you want to download each one of these, go ahead and double click if you're on a Mac, then press Install Font for each of these files. If you're on a PC, right click on the .ttf and then press Install. Nice and simple. I'm just going to adjust our word, recentering it and making it a bit larger. With the text set up, we're ready to make the outline effect. To do this, go up to your color panel. For the fill color, choose no fill by pressing on this icon right here. Then for the stroke color, I want to choose white. So right now I have these sliders here. I'm just going to bring this up for white. If you have these sliders as well, feel free to change this to your color wheel. That might make it a little easier to choose the right color. Next, I want to change the size of this stroke. You can see that it's very skinny right now. Now, adjusting this stroke isn't very obvious. It's kind of a hidden trick. To do this, have your text layer selected. Then press on the Shape tool. Then up in the Context toolbar, you can go to your Stroke and click here to adjust its size. I'll bring up the width. We also have a few options to change things about our stroke. I'll just zoom in so you can see this better. Where it says Join, you can change this from a rounded edge to a miter join. This makes the corners of our text more pointed, and I think that looks pretty good, so I'll keep mine set to that. At this point, you can be done with your outline effect. However, there are still some fun finishing touches that I want to share as an option that all focus on making this word more readable. If you have a busy background like this one, I think these tips will be key in helping your design. The first finishing touch is to create a dark but transparent fill to the letters. This will make the letters a little bit easier to read. To do this, you should still have the Shape tool selected. Then go up to the Fill option right here. Then you can choose a dark color. I'm going to click and drag on the color picker to sample this maroon color from the background. Then I'll click on the sampled color to apply it. To make this color more transparent, all you need to do is come to where it says Opacity, and then click and drag the slider down. You can see that you can make it less transparent or more transparent. Do what looks good for your image. Next, I'm going to adjust the text a little bit more by making it italicized. 
I'm going to go back to our text tool. Then with the text highlighted, I'll just come up to the context toolbar and italicize it. I can also bold our text. And I think that looks pretty nice. I am going to go back to our shape tool though. I think I want to make the stroke slightly bigger just to make it easier to read. The next finishing touch is to play with the background of this image. I want to create a framed effect around the text, so I'm going to have our rectangle tool out. Then I'm going to click and drag to draw a frame. Then I'll adjust the colors, making it have a white stroke and no fill. I like having the text and the frame match in width, so up in the context toolbar, I'm going to increase the stroke to the same size as our text. If you want to double check your stroke, just click on the text layer, and then up in the context toolbar, you can see that the text was set to 25 for its width, and I just did the same thing for our rectangle. And with this rectangle, I'm also going to change the join to miter to have nice sharp corners as well. I also want to give the rectangle a maroon fill, just like the inside of our letters. So I'll go to fill, I'll sample the maroon color, press on the sampled color, and then I'll lower the opacity. Right now, the rectangle is positioned on top of our text, making the white letters appear more pink than they should, so I'll just click and drag this rectangle beneath our text. Now I'm just going to grab our Move tool, and then I'll move this rectangle so that it's centered and it looks nice for our text. I'm also going to decrease the size of our text. As one last option, you can blur the inside of this rectangle frame just to make it even more readable. To do this, I'm going to select the background layer so that I'm blurring the donuts, not the text frame. Then I'm going to grab the rectangular marquee tool, and then I'll just click and drag going along the frame of this rectangle. Once you have that selected, you can go to the filters and then press Gaussian Blur. Then you can increase the radius to increase the blur of the donut background. Then I'll just press Command or Control D to deselect. As one last finishing touch, I'm noticing that the spacing between the letters doesn't look perfect. So I'm going to select our text layer. Then I'll select the artistic text tool. Then I'm going to go up to the context toolbar to the character panel where I can scroll down and then affect the kerning between the letters. To do this, I'll just place my cursor in between two of the letters. Then I'll hover over the kerning box and scroll with my mouse to adjust the spacing of the letters. Then I'll just grab our move tool and recenter the text. All right, I think our text effect looks great. It's beautiful and we can still read the words. Nice work. If you want to learn our affinity workflow, then check out the free course below.